This lesson will give you a way to calculate the square roots of non-perfect squares by hand. To demonstrate this method, let's take the square root of a simple non-perfect square, like 5. So I'll make finding the square root of 5 our goal for this question. Now, we're going to set this up and it's going to look a little like long division, but you will notice some definite differences. So it's still a square root symbol. I'm going to put a decimal there, and just like long division, we'd follow it by a bunch of zeros if we knew it didn't divide evenly. The only difference is I'm going to put these zeros in pairs, and I'll show you why we need to do that when we're dealing with square roots. When we, for example, take the square root of 100, now 100 has two zeros. So the square root of 100 is 10, which has one zero. Now, if we took the square root of, say, a million, which has six zeros in it, our answer would be 1,000, which has three zeros. Okay, so for every pair, of zeros in our square root, we get one zero in our answer. That's sort of a nice simple way to summarize that. Now, if we're talking about decimals, let's say if I have two decimal places like 0 0.01, we know what that stands for. That means one one hundredth or one over a hundred. So if I take the square root of one over a hundred, the square root of 1 on top is 1, the square root of 100 on the bottom is 10, so that means our answer would be 1 tenth or 0 0.1. We go from two decimal places to one decimal place. So similarly in our question we've got it set up so this pair of zeros would represent one decimal place in my answer this pair would represent another decimal place and the final pair would represent a third decimal place. So I'm hoping to get this answer accurate up to three decimal places. Now let's get rid of all this pink stuff here. Okay and let's get started. So now we need to find a perfect square just smaller than five. So we know that would be 4. And the square root of 4 we know is 2. So that'll be the whole number part of our answer. Now again we're going to multiply 2 by 2 to get 4. So I'll put that 2 there and it looks a little like long division when we start these questions. Now if I subtract I will get 1 and instead of bringing down one zero, I'm going to bring down the pair of zeros. So that's where it differs a bit from long division. And now it's going to differ a lot more because what we're going to do to find the divisor out front here is we're going to take this two in our answer and we are going to multiply it by two to get four. And that's not all we are going to put another digit after this 4 right here and I'm going to put that in a red box and I'm also going to put a red box up here in our answer to indicate that those would represent the same number. So for example let me just try something here to show you what I mean. Let's say I put a 1 
in this red box. Then I would have a 1 up top here, which would get multiplied to the divisor 41. And I'd put 41 in here, and then we'd go ahead and subtract. Now we can tell that's going to be too small of a number because I'll get a number bigger than 41 for my remainder. So I've got to choose a bigger number in that red box. So let's go back up and let's try the number 2, which I think you'll see will work nicely here. So that means I'll multiply this 2 to 42 and that'll give me 84 here and then we'll subtract and come up with the number 16. And now we'll go through the steps all over again. We'll bring down the pair of zeros, set this up to look like long division, and we will take both of the answers up top here. So the two twos, multiply them by two, so that'll give me 4 and 4. And again, I need another digit here. So I'm going to put in an orange triangle to indicate that. And I'll put an orange triangle up here in our answer to show again that that's the same number. Now, so this is 440 something. Well, 1600 would divide evenly by 400 four times. Since this number is going to be bigger than 400, I think the best I can do is put a digit of 3 inside that orange triangle. So now let's do our long division. We have 3 times 443, which would be 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. I'll carry the 1. And 3 times 4 is 12 again. With that 1 is 13. I will subtract, uh, let's see, we'd get 10 minus 9 is 1, uh, that would now be 9 minus 2 is 7, and I had to borrow 1 from the 6, so that'll be 5 minus 3 is 271. So we'll go through this process again. I will bring down the next set of zeros. So I'll go back to dark blue again. I will set this up to look like long division. Actually, I'll like that. And we'll take these three numbers this time, 2, 2, and 3, and multiply each one of those digits by 2. And so that'll give us 4, 4, 6, and now I need something again here, and let's see, I'm running out of things to choose. Let's choose a green rectangle. So I'll make a green rectangle here, and I'll put a green rectangle up here. When you're doing this on your own, you won't have to draw these boxes and things to explain it. You can just do it. So now, so I've got 4,460 with some other, uh, some other digit there, dividing into 27,100. Uh, let's see, 4,400 would go into that 5, would be 22,000. Uh, that's a little small. Uh, 6 would be 24. Uh, 6 will be closed. Let's try 6 here. All right. I guess worse happens. We have to go back and erase it. So let's try our 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. We'll carry 3. 6 times 6 is 36 is 9. We'll carry 3. 27. So we'll put down 7. Carry 2. And 6 times 4 is... 24 plus the 2 is 26. Let's subtract, and we will come up with 4. We'd have to borrow one, so that'd be 9, so that'd be 0. Um, that would have to be 0. 
and that would be 6, and so I'd have a remainder of 304. So that would be, remainder is going to be a lot smaller than 4,000, so that should be accurate up to three decimal places. So our answer for the square root of 5 should be 2.2. Three, six. Now let's check to see if we're right. We'll use Mayhem's calculator here and turn it on first of all. Take the square root of 5 2.2 not bad. <laughs>